Harry Wood gets Derek Bell for his 20th strikeout, a National League record. They're mobbing Harry Wood at the mound. On May 6, 1998, rookie pitcher Kerry Wood went to the mound for his fifth career start. After two hours and 19 minutes, Wood pitched one of the greatest games in baseball history. He allowed only one hit and threw 20 strikeouts, tied for the most strikeouts ever thrown in a nine-inning game. If those stats weren't crazy enough, let's take a look at something called Game Score. Originally developed by Bill James in the 1980s and updated in 2014 by fellow Sabre Matrician Tom Tango, Game Score seeks to judge a pitcher's effectiveness in a single game. This is done by using a scale between 0 and 100, with rare performances going above 100. A game score of 50 is an average pitching performance, and most game scores end up between 40 and 60. Here are the formulas for both versions of game score. Pause the video if you want to read the whole thing. So, knowing this, let's check out some examples. Between the seven no hitters in 2021 that were accomplished by only one pitcher, while they all had Tango game scores over 100, none of them had a James game score of 100, which illustrates the differences between the two metrics. In fact, throughout MLB history, only 16 nine inning pitching performances have had a James game score of at least 100. Kerry Wood's 20 strikeout game is at the top of this list. However, earlier this month, a 20 year old Japanese pitcher by the name of Roki Sasaki pitched one of the greatest games in baseball history. In fact, not only did his performance receive a game score over 100, it's the highest nine inning game score ever. Oh, and one more thing. This was a perfect game. Before we move on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, SeatGeek. Live events are back, and most importantly, baseball is back. That means you can get $20 off tickets at SeatGeek with promo code STORM. If you don't know what SeatGeek is, it's a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. It's an app I've used in the past, and I'll definitely be using it for this upcoming baseball season. Besides baseball, there's a plethora of different events you can choose from. There's basketball, football, hockey, soccer, concerts, festivals, and much more. And SeatGeek wants to make sure you're getting a good deal. So when you're on the app, make sure you're looking for the green dots. Green means you're getting a good deal. You see a red dot? That's not a good deal. And don't worry, I got you, because when you use the code STORM, you get $20 off your first purchase. Again, that's $20 off your first purchase by using the code STORM. Click the link in the description and download the SeatGeek app today. On July 26, 2019, LA Times columnist Dylan Hernandez wrote an article on a Japanese teenager who was being compared to Shohei Otani. At the time, 17-year-old high school pitcher Roki Sasaki was taking part in his last high school baseball tournament as he was preparing to take the next step in his baseball future. Like Otani, Yu Darvish, and Yusei Kikuchi, Sasaki played high school baseball in the Tohoku region of Japan. Unfortunately, this was also the region where the 2011 Japanese earthquake and tsunami took place. At the age of nine, Sasaki lost his father and grandparents to these tragic events. The family house was swept away by the tsunami as well, leading to Sasaki, his mother, and two brothers to move away from the coastal town they lived in to the town of Ofunado. It was here where Sasaki fell in love with baseball, as it gave him an outlet to focus on during those troubling times. Later, he emerged as a national level middle school player and received many offers to play for powerhouse high schools across the country. But Sasaki chose to stay in Ofunado and play for the local high school because he was able to dedicate himself to baseball due to the support he received from the people in Ofunado. In his first high school season, he was throwing at 147 kilometers per hour or around 91 miles per hour. During his senior year, Sasaki unofficially threw a pitch at 100 63 kilometers per hour, or over 101 miles per hour. The official high school senior record is held by Shohei Otani, who threw a pitch at 160 kilometers per hour, or 99 miles per hour. Sasaki's pitch was an unofficial record because it was tracked by a scout's radar gun in a training camp, rather than an official game. However, not too long after, Sasaki tied Otani's record in an official game. 
Also, in a game that was attended by both NPB and MLB scouts, Sasaki threw six no-hit innings with 13 strikeouts. Quite the impressive showing. Then in late 2019, Sasaki announced his intentions to become a pro baseball player and entered the NPB draft. Just a quick recap on how the first round of the NPB draft works. All 12 teams can pick whoever they want, and if multiple teams pick the same player, each team picks an envelope out of the box and one of these cards grants the draft rights to one team. So in the 2019 draft, Sasaki was drafted by four teams, which made him the most sought after player in the draft. The Chiba Lote Marines won his draft rights. Sasaki was such a hyped up prospect that his first public bullpen session is now the second most viewed video on the team's YouTube channel. He didn't pitch in 2020, but in 2021, he played for Lotte's major league and minor league teams, performing very well at both levels. So how did he start the 2022 season? By throwing a pitch over 164 kilometers per hour, roughly 102 miles per hour. In fact, Sasaki's four-seam fastball has averaged around 99 miles per hour. In 2021, only one MLB starter averaged a four-seam fastball velocity of at least 99 miles per hour. That pitcher was Jacob deGrom. Remember, Sasaki is only 20 years old. Well, a couple weeks later on April 10th, Sasaki started a game that became one of the greatest pitching performances ever. After a couple ground outs to start the game, Sasaki struck out the final batter of the first inning with a nasty splitter. A pitch he threw for nearly 92 miles per hour. Do you know how many MLB starting pitchers threw a splitter with an average velocity of 92 miles per hour? No one. No one even crossed the 90 miles per hour threshold. The only ones who could were relievers, Juri's Familia and Hirokazu Sawamura. However, with all due respect, these guys couldn't do what Sasaki did. After he struck out the final hitter of the first inning, Sasaki struck out the next 12 batters he faced. With a mixture of 100 miles per hour fastballs and low 90 splitters, Sasaki set a new NPB record by striking out 13 consecutive batters. Also, if this outing occurred in MLB, this would also be a new record as the most consecutive strikeouts by an MLB pitcher is 10. Funny enough, I don't think Sasaki's best strikeout of the game was in this streak. It was his 14th strikeout of the game. I can't say I've ever seen a player end up on the ground in the way this player did. Interestingly, the very next at bat was arguably the most crucial of the game as it was the first three ball count Sasaki gave up. Luckily, the batter hit it to center field for a fly out. And to end the seventh inning, Sasaki confirmed how good he is by throwing a 101 miles per hour fastball for the strikeout. Again, this was the seventh inning. Then in the eighth inning, he struck out every single batter with a splitter. Unbelievable. Now for the biggest ninth inning of Sasaki's young professional career. First batter, ground out the third. Second batter, ground out to the shortstop. One out to go. Haiku. These two guys right here, 20-year-old Roki Sasaki and 18-year-old catcher Ko Matsukawa, just achieved something incredible. Not only was this the first NPB Perfect game since 1994, not only did he tie the NPB record for most strikeouts in a game, this was accomplished with only 105 pitches. Looking at MLB history, only six perfect games have been accomplished with 105 or less pitches. However, the highest number of strikeouts thrown was 10. Sasaki threw 19. Not only has an MLB Perfect game never had 19 or more strikeouts, since 1901, no pitching performance has ever had 19 or more strikeouts with 105 or less pitches being thrown. 
The best I could find was Corey Kluber's 18 strikeout performance against the Cardinals in 2015, one year removed from his first Cy Young award. Even then, the game scores aren't even close. Also, let's consider the league environment differences. NPB is much more contact oriented, which can be seen with a lower slugging percentage, strikeout rate, and a higher batting average. So the fact Sasaki struck out 19 of 27 batters and didn't allow a single base runner in a contact-oriented league is absolutely insane. One of those batters was DH Masataka Yoshida. He struck out only 26 times in 2021. During this game, he struck out three times. Center fielder Shuhei Fukada said this was the first time he had ever struck out in three consecutive at-bats. Absolutely incredible, and Sasaki couldn't have been more humble about it. In his post-game interview, Sasaki gave all the credit to his catcher, Ko Matsukawa, saying he placed his trust in Matsukawa until the end. Now, the only question left, will we see Sasaki in MLB anytime soon? Well, don't hold your breath. Sasaki is 20 years old, and he's currently in his third season of service time. If Sasaki wants to forego the entire process of being posted by his team and leave at his own will, he needs to accumulate nine years of professional experience, which is in 2028. However, in order to be posted by his team and receive a large contract, a scenario where MLB teams have a period of only 30 days to sign Sasaki, he needs to be 25 years years old and have at least six years of pro service time. In that scenario, Sasaki is eligible in 2027, as he will be 25 in five years. The only scenario where he sees MLB action sooner is if he goes the Shohei Otani route, a scenario where a player under 25 years old asks to be posted by his team, but can only earn money from an MLB team's international bonus pool. Otani left a lot of money on the table and took a great risk by leaving Japan so early into his pro career, but he's exceeded all expectations. However, Otani is an anomaly, and I don't expect Sasaki to do the same. Maybe the implementation of an international draft changes things, but my uninformed opinion is that he continues to stay in Japan for the next five or so years and joins an MLB team in his mid to late 20s. While I selfishly want Sasaki to come over to MLB as soon as possible, it's likely in his best interest to stay in his home country for the time being. I don't know about you, but I'm rooting for Sasaki wherever he ends up. Not just because of his talent, but his resilience as well. He's endured a lot of hardship in his young life, things I couldn't imagine enduring as a young kid. To go from that situation to the man he is today is absolutely remarkable. All the best to Sasaki. If you want to learn more about this perfect game, check out this video from Yaku Cosmopolitan. It goes deeper into the analytics from someone who has lots of knowledge on Japanese baseball, so go check it out. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.